Yo, what's going on, guys? So, do you remember that song by Akon called, uh, I think it was Akon, Against the Grain? It says, they always say, they always said, don't love a hoe, but I just went against the grain. So did Prince Harry. Check this out. The big red flashing warning signs about Meghan that Harry, not Harry Damore, but Prince Harry ignored. And we're already seeing the shitstorm. We're already seeing this entitled little feminist, ego-driven narcissist causing a shitstorm in the royal family. Three, that's the number of people very close to Prince Harry who warned him against marrying the feminist Meghan Markle. This week, Tatler published a corker of a story, and I have linked this story in the low bar down there, guys. By the way, if this is your first time watching, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bang the bell. In fact, smash the bell, like Kate Mulvey smashed the wall. Tatler published a corker of a story about the Duchess of Sussex's first year as a fully-fledged Windsor. In among the salacious but credibly sourced details, such as the fact Kensington Palace staff call her Megan when she leaves the room to make a green juice, was the revelation that Hazza, or Harry that is, has banished his best mate Tom, nickname Skippy. Tom in Skip for telling the royal ranger he shouldn't settle down with the suit star. You guys ever heard the term bros before hoes? I sure have. But yet he put a hoe before his bro. And look what's happening to him now. Guys, I'm dead serious. Right? If if you if you're still dating, right? It's your choice. Respect your choices. But make sure you listen to your friends that give a shit about you, especially the guys that have known you since you were in primary school, especially the guys that have been there for you through thick and thin, even when you fucked up and they took the brunt of it for you. Those guys are the men you should be listening to, among other people. But I'll get into that. According to the Society magazine, Skippy was an ultra loyal and tight lipped mate, aka, he shuts his mouth about everything, and he's got Harry's back. And Harry turned his back on this mate for a hoe bag. In fact, the boy's friendship dates back to nearly two decades. He was there doing Jaeger bombs with Harry during his infamous 2012 Las Vegas jaunt, which gave a whole new meaning to seeing the crown jewels. And Virgil, the legendary Dark Slayer, just said, I can see Mark Megan isn't there because she loves him. She's there for the royal social status. 100%. She's just using this as a platform to advance herself and advance her standing in society and to advance her publicity and to advance her feminist causes. She even said it before she even got married that she hopes to progress the feminist cause. She even said it. Like, she's not even trying to hide it. So, whole new meaning to seeing the crown jewels. And it was at the 2017 wedding in Jamaica that Harry first... Oh, God. It was at his 2017 wedding in Jamaica that Harry first introduced Meghan to his closest mates. So, we didn't introduce Meghan to his closest mates until they were getting married. For fuck's sake. Like, that's, that, that's something, right, as a dude, you should introduce your mates to your potential future wife or your fiance if you've been stupid enough to put a ring on that finger before introducing them and getting their thoughts. And there's going to be some guys who are like, oh, I don't like her. And there might not be a valid reason for it. But when three people that give a shit about you and know you intimately express deep concerns, you should be thinking about whether you should proceed or not. You shouldn't be getting married at the best of times, let alone this. 
When Skippy voiced his apprehension about Megan as a potential royal blight, Harry is said to have cruelly cut him from his inner circle. Savage. And cruel, if you ask me. The Tatler story also revealed that while Prince Charles was initially impressed by Meghan, he said, and I quote, this is Prince Charles, the father of Prince Harry, said, I just hope he doesn't marry her. His friggin' dad knew that she was bad news and bad for the royal family, but he went ahead and did it anyway, didn't he? Idiot. Just like to say a big thank you to my loyal mods in the box right now. So three people. Okay. So and th and then let's not forget that it was Prince William's qualms about Harry tying the knot with the actress that was the initial cause of the brothers' estrangement. Right. So the dad worrying about Harry marrying this feminist has driven. Right. Um. So Prince William was worried about him marrying this chick, and that's what drew drove a wedge between Harry and his brother. Like, come on, royal brothers. Like, I would kill for a brother. Not literally, obviously, but man, I wish I had a brother. Like, so bad. You guys are my brothers. It's the next best thing without my biology. And I appreciate all of you. So the three people warned Harry that marrying Meghan was a big, fat, bad idea. So the Skippy, there's his dad. And there's his fucking brother. His dad and his brother. Are you serious? And you ignored them. And your best mate. Your dad, your brother, and your best mate warned you against marrying this feminazi, and you still did it, Harry, you clown. Hey, yeah. Not only that, but the poor, not only that, but the poor old Etonian faced the extraordinary humiliation during last year's royal wedding of being left off the guest list of the glamorous nighttime reception in favor of old friends, <coughs> old friends, such as. Oprah and Amal Clooney. Because they're such old friends of Harry's compared to Skippy. So three people warned Harry that marrying Meghan was a big, fat, bad idea. And now three important relationships in his life have been badly damaged by his decision to wed Meghan anyway. And that has got to be a big, flashing, red this is the closest I've got. Fucking, like, big. You can't miss it. The warning signs are here. It's fucking in front of your face, for God's sakes. In a big red warning sign in regards to the future of his marriage. <sighs> Which is not to say she is solely responsible here. We've all had friends who become idiots when they fall nauseatingly in love. And that includes me in the past. That includes most of you guys in the past. We've all been suckered in at one stage. You know this. This is why we've gone monk. Or we've gone MGTOW. Or we've wisened up our game. This is why we've become red-pilled. Harry clearly had no interest in listening to the three. Or watching season one of The Crown. If he did, he would have seen that this particular romantic predicament, when a royal is gagging to say... And I do mean gagging, because he's obviously had a few dicks in his mouth if he's <laughs> if he's listening to Meghan Markle. Sorry, sorry, Harry, but had to be said. Uh, when a royal is gagging to say I do with a less than perfect match, and the family intervenes to say no, has played out before. If he'd settled in for a Netflix binge, or as I like to call it, femflix, he would have known that when Princess Margaret was deciding whether he should marry group captain Peter Townsend, her mother and sister both wisely counseled her against it. And if he'd ever read much beyond back copies of FHM, he would know that years later she, be she grudgingly admitted that while it was deeply painful at the time, listening to her family was the best course of action. Smash that thumbs up, guys. When we are swept off our feet, we are when we are doe-eyed and drunk on love, it is our oldest and most loyal friends who drag us kicking and screaming back to reality and away from the plantation. True mates will kindly read you the riot act and collectively try and beat some fucking sense 
into your infatuated brain. And no, I'm not hitting myself in the face so that I can falsely accuse someone of domestic violence. I was just trying to drill it home for you guys. Because they are the ones who know you best and have some semblance of impartiality and distance. They can see potential issues and speed bumps ahead in a relationship while you're still mooning over the 878 photos you took of your new love in the past 24 hours. Look at this one of him trimming his nose hairs. Isn't that divine? Impetuous, crazy love is finite. Ain't that the truth? And it is when that flush of infatuation passes that your new love's foibles and issues become finally apparent. Such as, say, when you are living in the garden of your grand's house, you know, like the queen, and your best friend thinks you're a tool, and your brothers cut you loose, and your dad seems to be making the best of a bad situation. I'm going to go one step further and call it a shit situation. Such as when your wife insists on insta-perfect stunts during official events and building a fucking yoga studio and making you give up the booze and incorporating a $46,000 multimedia screen in your baby's nursery. All true, FYI. And I'd just like to give a big thank you to the hundred of you in the box and the Price is Right review for his $5 donation saying, yo, conservative MGTOW here working overnight so your content entertains and enlightens me every night. Keep it up, bro. I appreciate you, man. I'm glad you enjoy the content and that it lightens up your night. So when your wife insists on all these things and wants the $46,000 multimedia screen in the baby's nursery, completely unnecessary, but of course for a narcissist, anything that she wants is necessary. That is when harsh reality situation really and truly sets in. Lucky Harry has his newfound love of yoga to help him think straight, right? <laughs> and this is actually an incredibly well-written article from Daniela Elsa, uh, a royal expert and freelance writer. Clearly not a feminist, otherwise she'd be <laughs> licking Meghan Mar Markle's asshole. Anyway, guys, tell me what you think of this in the comments after this live video publishes. Please smash that thumbs up and another thank you to the Price is Right review for that generous donation. If you want to donate, paypal.me slash sydneymigtow or patreon.com slash sydneymigtow to all of you across the globe enjoying this content, be during the day, during the night, wherever you are, whatever your time zone is. I appreciate you all and thank you so much for